the for the elements that talk about categorical databases and functors. So these were an application of functors. I don't think we'll we'll get through all of this, or at least if there's uh, interest, we can talk about it further. So I, I do have a meeting here uh, immediately after this um, of some import. Um, but uh, within this material and, and going through the these two videos, I, I realized um, I would have been, uh, you would have been um, better off if I had um, sort of specifically delineated portions that are directly relevant, although maybe seeing the basics of categories and functors uh, and indeed natural transformations was uh, a useful reminder. Um, but both these two lectures included significant um, material. Oh, I should share the screen. Um, oops, oh, oh, uh, mumble. Um, uh, so both these, both these uh, videos had significant materials on, uh, on, on categorical databases. Um, they were less dense than I remembered, and uh, hopefully you still came away with some understanding. So the idea here is uh, that we're taking into account uh, the structure that's associated with databases. And we may think of, I mean, in the popular mind, I think databases are kind of jumbles of data. Um, but um, in fact, as computer scientists, it behooves us to recognize that Databases, um, uh, when used properly, exhibit um, rigorous structure. And it's not just the fact that they're arranged in tables or what have you, but they adhere to certain invariants. Like, you know, a, a primary key has unique values for each row, for example. Um, uh, and there's types of data and their data integrity constraints uh, concerning the relationship between tables um, to ensure that they are uh, consistent with one another. Um, uh, and uh, and they are logically sound in their depiction of the situation. Um, and uh, in robust accesses and transformations between databases require maintaining this structure. Um, the answer to queries requires reasoning about uh, the structure of the database. Um, and when you're mapping from one schema to another, undergoing data migration, um, uh, or you're engaging in data cubing for online analytics or something, um, you know, there's structural features of the data behooves you to, to acknowledge and, and, to, and you need to reason about it and need to maintain to honor it and, and uh, maintain its constraints. Um, so not surprisingly, um, uh, the, the organizers of the class being category theorists, um, uh, they approach this from a categorical perspective, realizing that categories provide uh, this um, uh, unparalleled way of, of characterizing structure. Um, and capturing that structure in mappings, uh, honoring that structure, observing that structure. Um, and uh, the observation here is that a lot of the um, basic elements we've been dealing with, uh, categories, uh, functors, natural transformations, have, um, have these um, associations uh, in terms of uh, the, the category of, or in terms of the context of databases. So uh, here, uh, database schemas are described with categories where an object is a table, an object in the category is a table in the database and a morphism within that, uh, uh, a non-identity morphism within that category, uh, corresponds to a foreign key relationship. Um, so uh, uh, so some, some uh, field that, that maps from this table to another table. Um, uh, 
connecting those objects in the, in the category. A database instance here, uh, an instantiation of, of that database with actual data uh, consists of a functor from the database category to set. Um, and that may seem a little bit puzzling, but we'll talk about it. Um, every, uh, every table uh, is, is associated with some set of primary keys and every function, every morphism between tables is associated with a mapping from one set, the set of primary keys to the, to the target uh, table, the keys from the target table. A database transformation, I said it incorrectly last time there was an natural transformation. Natural transformations are of interest here, but uh, this actually corresponds to universal constructions. And uh, it turns out database migration um, can be reasoned about with adjunctions and uh, in the context of, of a, a type of, uh, of, of universal uh, construction called uh, pullbacks and, and limits. So um, if we have a database where we uh, have three tables, patients, physicians, and wards, where a patient has you know, two foreign keys associated with them, the, the physician responsible for them and the ward in which the patient is located. Maybe the physician is associated with a specific ward and the ward has an attending, has a kind of senior physician associated with it. Um, uh, associated with this are data integrity constraints. So they might say, for example, um, the responsible physician for a patient has to be a physician associated with the ward in which the patient is located. Um, uh, or the, the ward associated with, uh, if, if a ward has an attending, they have to be a physician associated with this ward. Uh, so um, there are these integrity constraints concerning how these fields relate to one another that need to maintain these invariants. Um, so here's, you know, our patient table. We have a patient one and they have a physician um, and they have a ward in which the patient is located. And uh, this physician associated with patient one, patient one's in ward one. So this physician needs to be a physician who serves ward one for sure, right? It wouldn't make sense if the physician was in another ward. Uh, patient three is in ward two and they have physician three. And if you look, uh, you could see uh, the physician three it, it is, is indeed in ward two. Um, and the ward, each ward has an attending associated with it. So for all patients, P, uh, P dot ward uh, equals their physician's ward, P dot physician ward. And for all wards, their attending ward is the same as that ward. Um, so these are some data integrity constraints that are sort of sanity checks that need to be observed. You know, this is not just a jumble of data. It's a it's data that observes these things. So uh, here's uh, patients, physicians, and wards, and we can map it out as a category. So, so these are objects, patients, physicians, and wards, one of them for each table. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, when we talk about the physician of a patient, well, that's captured as a morphism from one of these tables to another. It, it maps from one table to another, you could be forgiven for saying. Um, and um, so it's it, the table from whence, whence this arrow comes is the table in which this would be a, a key. So physician is in the patient table. Oh, sorry, is a, is a, is a key in the patient table. Um, uh, and attending is a morphism associated with the fields in the, the word table. There we go. Um, and uh, these, these objects correspond therefore to, to tables. 
anamorphisms to the fields associated with the table. Not shown here is like an identity morphism, which would correspond, for example, to the primary key, say, in the patient table. There'd be an identity morphism, not, not shown here, by convention of Hasse diagrams. Um, and one of the things that comes out from this, if you think about this as a category, remember categories are not just themselves jumbles of dots and arrows. They, they have to observe some rules. They have to be lawful. They have to capture structure. And how, a key element of how they capture structure is, is well, it's, it's through morphisms we capture structure. And it's specifically the fact we have this composition of morphisms um, that capture structure. So um, it's through the composition rules that we express extra structure in this database. Um, so we'll identify certain morphisms here. So for example, this uh, morphism here, if we do that after physician, so if we start with a patient, we take their physician, and then we take um, the ward associated with that physician, that has to equal the patient's ward. So this morphism needs to commute with, needs to be the same one. So if we do this mapping from patient to ward, it has to be the same mapping as if we had gone from patient to the physician to their ward. That has to get us to the same ward. So we say it, com it, it, it commutes, whether we go this way or this way, they commute and we put a, a check mark in it. Similarly, uh, if we have uh, here the attending associated with the ward. So if we start with the ward and we consider the, the attending for that and we ask, so that gives us a physician. And then we ask, who's the, who's the, um, uh, the, the what's the ward associated with that physician? You got to get back to the same ward. It's not just that it goes round trip here. It's, it needs to get us back to a, a, the exact ward we started with. So we map the ward over with attending to the physician and we come back by asking the ward if that physician needs to be the same specific ward, right? Um, um, it's not just that it gets us back to this object. No, 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 it gets us back to the same, in this case, element of that object if we think about it. Um, so maybe I'll ask here, we're, we're, you know, time is going quickly, but um, suppose we consider uh, attending after this. So suppose we have a ward, uh, excuse me, uh, we have a physician and we ask about their ward. And then we ask about who their attending is. Is that guaranteed to be the same physician? No, no. If if it breaks when it's the particular physician is a non-attending physician. Precisely, exactly. So we could have some wards like ward one here where there's two physicians. Patient one is physician one. Patient two is physician two um, in that ward. But only one of those physicians is in fact the attending for that one. Which one is it? It's physician one. Physician two is in that ward, but they're not the attending. So um, it is not true that this is, is, is equal to this. Um, if we start with a physician and we ask what their ward is, and then we go back with attending. Well, I mean, Ron Trippett gets us back to this object. I mean, we're dealing with some physician. But it's not the, the same physician. It's not the, the particular physician. It's not what we would have gotten if we had just done an ID on this. Um, so, so that's not a constraint. These ones are constraints. These are, these are these integrity constraints that we talked about. Um, these integrity constraints are captured through this composition. OK, so that's kind of interesting. None of this is yet imposing that this has to be set. I'm, I'm using kind of suggestive language, things like elements and so on here, but it, 
doesn't have to be. We're defining this in terms of the morphism. This morphism equals that one. I, I didn't say anything like in this equation about it. it has to be the same word. I, I said it verbally, but really with category theory, we get much more power of talking of two morphisms are the same without committing ourselves to having, having these, these things have to be set. Um, but uh, when it comes to instantiation of databases, when it comes to a, you know, a particular database like this one, um, it behooves us to, to think about instantiating these uh, uh, in, in a concrete way. Um, and here we're dealing with um, this notion of database instances as set valued functors. Now that's a mouthful, but basically what it's talking about is that um, we have a, a functor, a structure preserving mapping from the category characterizing the schema of the database like this, that where, you know, in that categorical structure is, is these sort of rules about composition that are particular to that category. That category has these rules about composition. That's part of its definition. And we have a structure preserving mapping from that over into set. So what is that going to mean? Well, it's going to mean for each of these, each of these objects, we're going to need to map that object into some set. Because we're mapping object to objects and morphisms to morphisms. Objects in this category are, well, there are three of them here. Um, uh, and each of those has to be mapped to an object in set. Because in the objects in set are, what are the objects in set? Can anyone tell me? The objects in set are sets. Sets. They're sets. Morphisms in set are, are functions, but we'll get to that in a minute. But the objects are sets. So if in, in the set category, the category set bold face, set um, are, are sets. So this object has to map to a particular set. And to what set does it map? It maps to the set of primary keys. For that object. So the set of primary keys for that patient, right? There they are. Patient one, patient two, patient three. There we go. So um, morphisms here, these morphisms um, are mapped into morphisms in the category set. And what are the morphisms in the category set? Anyone? What are the morphisms of category set? I said it earlier, but it should be said early and often. What are they? Anyone? Uh, morphisms in set are what? Between sets? Yeah, they're, they're, they're functions between sets functions from sets. A morphism, therefore, is mapped into the, the functor. The set value functor maps morphisms in this category into functions between sets. So it maps between these sets. And so a, a morphism between patient and physicians in the category maps into a function from the set of primary keys and patients. To the set of primary keys and physicians. Now that sounds like a mouthful, but in short, it maps each patient associated with each primary key in turn into a specific physician, right? A primary key in the physician table, identifying the physician. So it says who is the physician of this patient. And it does so for all patients um, and uh, works to ensure that, you know, never is the same patient associated with multiple physicians, in that, which is a simplification here. Um, 
Uh, okay, so um, here we have patients, we have physicians, and we have these data integrity constraints. And the fact that we have these data integrity constraints guarantees that if, and, and because functors are structure preserving mapping, they not only map objects to objects, but morphisms to morphisms, but they honor the composition. If we have the composition rules and the identity rules, if we have a rule here expressed that the composition of these guys has to equal this one, um, if that's expressed in the definition of the category, that will be honored when this is mapped over into set. That will be mapped by those, those will be honored by those functions. So it'll be observed, it'll be part coded in those functions. The functions will capture this relationship that if we uh, consider the physician associated with a patient and consider their ward, it'll be the same as the patient's ward. The, the, the function that maps patients to wards will completely accord with, precisely accord with um, the function that goes from patient to physician, that from that patient to the physician where it maps them in physician and where it maps that, that physician to an ward is guaranteed to be the same thing because the functor preserved this composition relationship in the mapping. Um, okay, so if we have patients like patient one, patient two, patient three, and physicians, physician one, two, three, and wards one, one and two, um, uh, then maybe we have a particular mapping, a uh, particular function um, uh, that specifies uh, for patients, their physicians, that's this one here, um, as it's mapped into set, which is like this. It says for patient one, they have physician one, patient two, they have physician two, patient three, they have physician three. And indeed, that's exactly what this is. Mm -hmm. So all I'm doing is I'm writing down this database in the form of, of these mappings, these functions, together with the primary keys over here. So I'm transliterating this database into this structure. And in this structure, we have captured precisely these invariants. Those are guaranteed to be honored by, preserved by, observed by um, the, the functor. Okay. Um, and those are implicit in these, uh, in these mappings. So a functor could map this to many sets. I mean, we could have other databases where we have 10,000 patients and, you know, much, and when we have functions that list hundreds of physicians or something, but all of them will observe these invariants because those are being mapped by a functor and functors are structure preserving mapping that honor composition and they honor identity. Um, Okay, um, how are we doing for, oh my gosh. Okay, no, I have like one minute left. Okay, so um, we may come back to this at a later time uh, after we do universal construction or, or, or even later. But um, with data migration and data uh, transformations, now we have additional texture because you know we, we're going now, not just mapping from a single category specifying a schema into set to instantiate that database. We're mapping between schemas and we're, we're mapping instantiated databases, databases that have values in them between schemas in a way that stays true to the invariance of those schemas. Um, and if that sounds tricky, how to do that mapping, not willy nilly, but in a way that stays true to the invariants. Um, this is why we need categories to think this through, to make sure, to ensure that it's being undertaken in a rigorous and provably correct fashion. Um, uh, these needs are, are very common. And uh, it turns out that the subject of the, the first interlude in a separate video that I recorded uh, at the beginning of class here with you, 
on contravariants comes in a big way here because out of this comes, guess what? Not just a standard functor here, but a contravariant functor, okay? Um, uh, and if we're seeking to convert data from database C, sorry, database D to database C, we're gonna use a functor that goes in the opposite direction from C to D, or we could have put it another way. If we're going from C to D, we need a functor that goes from D to C. And this is incredibly cool. Um, and if you read uh, Seven Sketches and Functionality, Seven Sketches and Functionality, Seven Sketches and Compositionality, um, it will uh, lay this out about why this has to be. And, and you can come to grok it. Um, but, um, you know, the sneak preview is that uh, we, it's associated with a, a pullback of sorts, as I, I recall. And uh, given, you know, given two categories encoding schemas, C and D, we can characterize kind of all transformations between them. Um, and it turns out there's an adjunction between them. We're, we saw adjunctions in our discussion group um, and we're gonna see them again big time. Uh, they, they're just wonderful uh, constructs and they come up in lots of places. And one of them is these relationships um, associated with uh, data transformations. Um, so um, we will see how we could transform back and forth between an instance uh, with database schema characterized by category C to one characterized by category D. Okay, so unfortunately I'm late uh, for this meeting, so I'm gonna have to sign off now, but that's a sneak preview. And hopefully it will help convince you that the, you know, that, that getting acquainted, uh, securing the pleasure of acquaintance um, with contravariant functors or with contravariants with contravariant functors being an example, uh, will end up paying off in, in many unexpected quarters. And database migration is one of them. Okay, thank you for your attention today. And uh, I will look forward to uh, seeing you on Monday. Thanks greatly. Take care there.